In this section, we will work another example of constructing a z-interval. Since if you've been following my videos so far, you've already seen how to do this, you should consider this one an exercise for you to work and try to work out all the steps before reading your solutions on the following slide. So after each thing, I'll pause when I tell you to do it and see if you can work it all out yourself. Suppose that a hospital is measuring the birth weights of all newborn babies. They have already collected weights from a random sample of 40 babies and computed their mean weight to be 122 ounces. Use this information to construct a 97% confidence interval for the mean weight of all babies from the larger population. Furthermore, suppose that they know that the standard deviation of weights in the population is 15 ounces. So let's consider what it is we're doing first. What do we want to do? We want to construct a confidence interval for the true mean of a larger population from the sample. The standard deviation of the population is known. We have a single sample we're working from to try to infer the mean from a larger population. And the sample size is greater than 30. So what does that mean? Well, that means we can be assured that the distribution of sample means is approximated well by a normal distribution, even if uh, the individual uh, weights, in this case, are not necessarily normally distributed. Probably the weights are close to normal anyway, but certainly with a sample size of bigger than you know, 40, much bigger than 30, we don't have to worry about that. With these conditions satisfied, we can use a z-interval effectively. So you should be able to work this one out completely. Um, press pause and work through it, and then when you get done, come back and check your answer. Press pause now. Well, here we go. Here's what we have needed for the computations. N is 40, sample size. X bar is 122. Sigma of the X's, or it's just sigma, for the population, for the individuals, is 15. 1 minus alpha, the confidence level is 0.97. 1 minus alpha over 2, or 1 plus confidence level over 2, is 1.97 divided by 2, which is 0.985. And so what do we do for the margin of error? It's the sigma of x's over square root of n times inverse norm, or 1 plus confidence level divided by 2. That's 1.97 divided by 2 right there. And we can plug in 15 here and 40 here and just type it in pretty much just like this on the calculator. I think over here on the side, uh, it looks like I went ahead and figured out this as 0.985 and plugged it in right here in the, in the T84. Stored that as E. I stored 122 as M for the mean, which is X bar. And I just do M minus E and M plus E, and there are the limits of my confidence interval. So the confidence interval goes from this 116 point something to 127 point something there and here I just rounded off to the nearest uh, one uh, decimal place tenths place to be 116.9 to 127.1 of course those units are the same units as X which was uh, ounces now see if you can interpret this well, the 97% confidence interval for the mean weight of all babies is 116.9 ounces to 127.1 ounces. We're 97% sure that the true mean is in this interval. In other words, if we were to repeat this process with different samples of size 40 uh, baby weights, we would expect this process to produce intervals which capture the true mean around 97% of the time. Come back for the next video and we'll look at some technology shortcuts.